Hi, I am Ryusuke Sugimoto, and I am a PhD student at the University of Waterloo in Canada. In this video, I will talk about our paper, A Practical Lock and Boundary Method for Boundary Value Problems. I worked on this project with two undergraduate students, Terry Chan and Niti Zhan, together with my advisors, Christopher Betty and Toshia Hachiska. The walk and boundary method is a Monte Carlo or MC method for partial differential equations such as Laplace equation. It was originally developed by Sabelfeld in 1982, and we are the first to introduce it to computer graphics. To estimate the solution, just like MC ray tracing for rendering, we sample many different paths stochastically and compute their average contributions. Similar to MC ray tracing, we get a noisy estimate first, and then the noise clears away as we spend more time generating more samples. Walk and boundary retains the favorable properties that the previous work, walk and spheres method had. This includes the flexibility of geometric representation, robustness, parallel computation, and point-wide solution estimations, to name a few. However, the previous work, Walken Spheres method, and its family, including the concurrent work, Walken Stars method, used the closest point query to estimate the solution, and the mathematical basis is also quite different from the one in rendering. Additionally, the Walken Spheres method introduces some non negligible bias to the estimate due to its epsilon shell path termination strategy and Walken stars also inherit such an undesirable effect in some cases. On the other hand, our Walken boundary estimator can accurately estimate the solutions without such bias around or even on the boundary. Let us first do a quick review of MC ray tracing. MC ray tracing randomly samples light paths to simulate the phenomena of light transport, and it has a long history of development. The problem we try to answer in our paper is whether we can utilize MC ray tracing for something other than rendering. To think about this problem, let's take a look at its theory. And we can say MC ray tracing is a numerical algorithm that solves the rendering equation. In its area form, assuming completely diffuse surfaces, the rendering equation can be written this way. It says, the unknown radiance at a specific point on surface can be represented as the sum of the emitted radiance there and the contribution from the radiance at all surface points in the scene. The magnitude of contribution is described using an integral kernel, which is a multiplication of Lambertian BRDF, geometry term, and visibility term. MC ray tracing estimates the radiance on surfaces by recursively applying this equation. The equation we want to solve is a Laplace equation, which is a very common PDE, Laplace u equals zero. But we can rewrite it as a boundary integral equation. As an example, let's see how it is possible for the interior Dirichlet problem. The solution to an interior Dirichlet problem satisfies Laplace u equals zero inside of the domain while conforming to a prescribed boundary value g on the domain boundary. What the potential theory, the field of study of harmonic functions, tells us is that for the problem we are considering, we can write the solution u inside of the domain as a superposition of a known function, which is the normal derivative of the fundamental solution to the equation, with the unknown density function. What this tells us is that if there is a way to estimate the unknown density function, then we can easily estimate the solution as well. To do that, we need an equation for the density function. We get such an equation by making the domain point x approach the boundary. This equation says the unknown density function at the point on the boundary is the sum of the contribution coming from the known boundary value term and the unknown density function at all points on the boundary where the integral kernel function defines the magnitude of contribution. This is a boundary integral equation we get for the interior dish day problem of Laplace equation. When we compare this to the rendering equation, 
we can observe that they are in the same form where we have the unknown function we need to estimate on the left hand side of the equation and also inside of the integral. This type of equation is indeed classified as Fred Holm integral equation of the second kind, and this allows us to solve the Laplace equation with an MC ray tracing approach. This is the basic idea of Wacken boundary. Given the underlying integral equation, we estimate the integral with a recursive MC estimator. This way, similar to MC ray tracing, we can sample a point at each step of the walk to construct a path and then estimate the solution by the average of sample path contributions. In our paper, we terminate paths with a fixed length by accepting some bias, and only for the longest path contributions, we multiply 1 over 2 as a result of the analysis of the underlying integral equation, and we discuss more details in the paper. The theory and the equation might sound a little complicated, but the implementation of walk and boundary is simple. We can write the core part of walk and boundary in less than 30 lines. We can also quickly implement walk and boundary on top of an existing ray tracer like PBRT. We made these implementations publicly available on GitHub to foster further research. The discussion and results so far focused on the interior issue problem, but walk and boundary has a high generality by using a different boundary integral equation for each problem. We summarize the equations in the paper, and using them, we get the solutions to Laplace equation with Dirichlet, Neumann, Robin, and mixed boundary conditions in both interior and exterior domains. The original walk and spheres could solve only interior Dirichlet problems efficiently and the concurrent work walk and stars extended its applicability to problems with Neumann boundaries. In addition to those boundary conditions, our walk and boundary supports Robin boundaries as well. In addition, one unique feature of walk and boundary is that it allows the estimation of solutions directly on the boundary without additional bias. Moreover, we can generalize the walk and boundary to solve the Poisson equation with a non-zero source term with an additional evaluation of a volume term at each step of the walk. We have seen the types of problems that walk and boundary can solve, but walk and boundary has so much freedom in how we solve such problems too, due to its striking similarity to MC rendering. The most straightforward approach is with ray intersection sampling. Unlike the rendering equation, our integral kernel does not contain the visibility term. So when the ray has multiple intersections, we sample one of the intersection points with uniform probability and proceed. This handling of multiple intersections incurs additional variance, but the variance is still bounded and we can use this strategy. We call this sampling strategy the backward estimator in analogy to rendering, but we can sample paths in the opposite direction too. That gives us a forward estimator, which is a more efficient estimator in some cases, and we use this forward estimator for Neumann problems. Another class of sampling technique that we investigated is the method inspired by the virtual point light method in rendering. Rather than estimating the solutions independently at all pixels, we construct the boundary cache first and use it to estimate the solution to improve efficiency. The solution we get with this caching approach is guaranteed to be smooth, making it a suitable option for potential flow fluid simulation, for example. A concurrent work discusses a similar approach for walk and spheres, but the formulation of walk and boundary trivially allows us to develop such a caching method for walk and boundary. We also apply the multiple important sampling technique in walk and boundary. The standard backward estimator works well when the boundary value is non-zero densely, but struggles to estimate the solution when the boundary value is non-zero sparsely. A next event estimation variant works well when the boundary value is sparse, but it does not work well in the dense case. The MIS combination of the two works well in both situations with walk and boundary but the existing bidirectional method with walk and spheres is not compatible with MIS. The last example of the sampling techniques we show in the paper is the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. 
Similar to the primary sample space metropolis light transport method, we maintain a global state in the sample space to resample path. With a cost of correlation across evaluation points, we get more efficient estimates of the solution. For walk and spheres, all of these advanced sampling techniques either cannot be applied or require additional heavy maths for the underlying theory. On the other hand, applying them to walk and boundary was very straightforward and they show their effectiveness due to the striking theoretical similarities between walk and boundary and MC rendering. We have introduced walk and boundary to graphics and showed some of its extensions, but we have only scratched the surface of walk and boundary. The choice of formulation we made leaves some bias due to the path truncation strategy we used, and the inefficiency caused by the multiple intersection handling should be overcome with additional denoising, for example. Some of the walk and boundary estimators we used are not compatible with domains with holes inside and need modifications for such cases. Lastly, we have shown the method's application to Laplace equation but we are interested in applying it to a more broad category of equations out there and using them for various graphics problems. We have some ongoing projects to address these problems, and I hope more people can start exploring these problems and beyond based on our paper as well. In summary, the walk and boundary method is a ray tracing style Monte Carlo PDE solver that is capable of solving many different kinds of boundary value problems. Its algorithmic and theoretical similarities to MC rendering allow us to apply advanced sampling techniques from rendering without difficulties. We have just started exploration walk and boundary, and I am very much excited to see what the further development of walk and boundary will bring to computer graphics. Thank you very much for watching this video.